Excellent. There's, there's still a lot of research going on. I know the University of Colorado is starting a, studying a, a barefoot uh, study this week or soon. Um, there's more studies coming out this fall. Um, I guess, Irene, do we have enough um, enough information so far to understand this is uh, there is a better way to run? I clearly think that there is evidence to show that changing the way that we land will change the way the, the loads to the body. What we don't have at this point are good well-controlled randomized studies um, that sort of study a group of people who wear minimal shoes and a group of people who wear standard shoes and see whether the minimal footwear folks or the barefoot folks get injured less. Those studies are ongoing at this point, but I don't think we have that data yet. And I think that's going to be very important because a lot of people ask that question. Um, I, I, can I follow up with one other Jeopardy. point? The Jay was making this point about the knee torques. Um, there was a study that just came out from Rush Medical Center, and it was on people with knee OA. So again, I'm hopping again from the runners, and some of the people that come to your store are people who are walking. And these are individuals with knee OA, and they tested them in clogs, typical athletic shoes, flip-flops, the Eva flip-flops, barefoot, and in Keds, which are like a minimum shoe. And they found that the knee torques were reduced, the forces at the knee were reduced by 15%, in the flip-flops, the bare feet, and the Keds, compared to the standard athletic shoe and the clogs. So their recommendation is that maybe we should be thinking differently. You know, we often think, oh, someone's got knee OA, we really got to cushion them. Remember what I said about cushioning? You end up pushing harder. You end up getting higher load rates. I'm a big advocate of reducing load rates because load rates have been shown to be related to knee OA. We've shown them to be related to every single injury we've looked at that impact peak, that spike. And, and so I think that these, this, this, this change in footwear and the questions that you're going to have are going to transcend runners and people, maybe just the lay public, who have things like plantar fasciitis and knee OA. I think a real, everyone's always waiting for kind of the ultimate, you know, epic study that's going to answer all this. But I think a difficult question out there, at least from the medical side, is what is an injury? You know, most of us kind of clearly understand, I pull my hamstring, it hurts, that's an injury. But what uh, Dr. Davis and Dr. DeSherry are, have been talking about is long-term degenerative changes, osteoarthritis. To me, that's an injury. It may not have happened today or, you know, immediately. So, that, so these things that we're discovering about footwear, torque forces, stresses at the hip, you know, we're about the only, uh, barefoot societies do not get knee osteoarthritis, do not get hip osteoarthritis, and they're walking may, way more miles than the average American. You know, they're in the right position. So, I mean, that to me is evidence enough. You know, you go to the Tower of Mara, they don't know what osteoarthritis is. I'm sure where Zola was raised, everyone who's still barefoot, do they get osteoarthritis or hip replacements? No. <laughs> yeah, there's your answer. So, osteoarthritis is a running injury, is a walking injury that, you know, from the time they're, you know, Jay's two-year-old, yeah, they need to be in the right position forever. You know, I was at, up at Estes Park this weekend and just witnessed, uh, my, I was up there just having fun, and there's a huge high school running camp there, and all of them are in these big, beefy shoes. And, you know, I wasn't going to go there <laughs> and, so and kind of interrupt their clinic. But you saw it all, and just, you know that that's just not right at just this heart level. And you wish you could just tell that coach, look, Trust me, <laughs> believe me now or listen to me later, get your kids in a flat, you know, something, you know, old pull out your school, your high school shoe if you're a 50 year old coach, what did you wear when you were in high school, pull that shoe out and put them in that. Yeah, I mean our high school team in West Virginia has just won two state championships, they're, they're training in Newtons and they're training in a barefoot, they're doing she running, this is a high school and they don't get hurt and we're a rural county in West Virginia just won two state state championships and they're getting they're they're learning the the education they're learning form and they're getting out of dysfunctional footwear so people question us well yeah don't put a high school kid in a newton i was like well, what's up with that tell me why <laughs> they're in a flat shoe yeah, if they were strong enough to run completely barefoot and had grass you know fields like like zola had when she was a kid sure they don't need that but we have all kinds of cruddy roads and, yeah, like, like, tiny bit on that as well uh, I get to uh, speak with a lot of great people, everybody on this panel, and uh, uh, occasionally I get to speak to Dr. Daniel Lieberman, who pub published his study last year. Uh, humans without footwear will land on their midfoot to forefoot. Um, 
the idea with that is the sensory perception, the way you're, believe it or not, the way your foot's moving in the air before it even contacts the ground is, it's, it's just so heightened without footwear. So the idea again with Newton was to allow your foot to be more natural, to let it bend more natural, to sense the ground, to not have the influence of, of a high heel to gravity. Uh, all of these things, I put about six or seven things into the thought of the shoe that you guys are selling and wearing. Uh, but the idea, again, is if we have, if, if we have this time to, to think about it and rethink about it, it's very natural. So when I talked to Dr. Lieberman, he goes, you know, Danny, I'm, I'm not really a proponent of, of everybody running barefoot and especially on concrete. We want to mimic the barefoot running style. This is the key. And so for 15 years of research that, that uh, Jerry and I and, and everybody at Newton put into it was to mimic the barefoot running style and have a shoe that allows you to do so and work better with the foot. So when you guys are talking about uh, all, all this barefoot, it's a great, great mechanism to learn how to run naturally. But just like Zola said, she didn't want to step on a piece of glass. That's an injury that's going to cost her you know, time as a runner. She's got to get stitches. You got to wait for time to heal, get a tetanus shot, yada, yada. Okay? So that's not too cool. So, you know, that's why we developed a Newton to allow your foot to react more, more traditionally or barefoot style. And again, that's what Dr. Lieber, Lieberman told me on the phone. We'd like for people to run more with barefoot style. And it's about that sensory input that we're lacking with, with common shoes. Along those lines, uh, most of you here that are retailers have built your business on the current shoes that are out there and the current styles that are out there. For the last 25 years, we've had all these shoes. No one's going to get up today and, and cl clean off their shoe wall and start, start fresh, obviously. And you've got a lot of different customers that obviously want a lot of different things and have their own opinions about things and injuries, blah, blah, blah. I guess the, the, big, the big rub for this whole thing, obviously there's some science and some belief that obviously there's a better way to run. But for you guys, it's what do you guys do? Uh, how do you transition? How do you take that customer and, and maybe make them a more natural runner? And so I guess from that point of view, um, we talked a little bit about transitioning and everything else. I guess we'll start with uh, maybe Mark and to talk about, you know, you're, you're going from you know, runners coming to a store and, you, and Mark owns a shop uh, which sells only natural running products. But a, a runner comes into a shop and maybe has heard some about this, maybe hasn't heard anything at all, maybe have injuries. I guess what's the starting point and then kind of take it through to the next couple steps. <clears throat> Well, I'm probably not the best person to answer that question because my two colleagues who've been working uh, this kind of new concept to kind of talk me into doing this, uh, Tom Shantz, raise your hand, and James Munnis is over there. They're here with their family. So about three months ago, we opened a, a shop in Shepherdstown, West Virginia, a town of 3,500 square uh, feet of space. We said, uh, essentially, we're just not going to sell anything that we believe is dysfunctional. And when I opened that shop, I actually brought in two pair of traditional shoes because I was like, well, some people are going to at least want to try on a traditional shoe and see how that feels. But because all we've put on the wall are flat shoes, the immediate engagement is a conversation of, well, wh what's up with this? And Tom and James engages the customer immediately about finding out what type of runner they are. You know, have, have they been hurt? You know, have they heard about you know this more minimal or barefoot? And they actually kind of engage them in a little bit of posture, foot anatomy, alignment, some of the chi running basic principles. So even before they're talking about shoes, they're just trying to teach them a little bit about how the body works and moves. Where traditionally in a shoe store, you'd come in, there's these wall of shoes, and they say, I like that when they put it on. And um, I know a lot of folks in this room are much more evolved than that. That's why you're here. You guys actually put people on treadmills, evaluate them, engage in these conversations. But you guys are probably not the, not the norm. You know, you're a small kind of outliers or early evolvers. But so they just engage a conversation. And then what really they do is they, well, we've talked for five minutes. Just put a pair of shoes on now that you at least kind of sense that you're not supposed to land on your heel. So I think you guys make that very clear. Say, do not land on the heel. Do not land on the heel. You know, go put the shoe on and go out and run a half mile. So we have demo shoes. Go out and run a half mile, come back and tell me how you felt. Most people kind of, they've shortened their stride and they kind of get it. And I think it's a matter of trust. You know, most of your customers trust you more than the local clinic or the local podiatrist. They trust you. That's why they're there. So if that's the conversation that, and, and I think what helps is to have most of you guys probably have been through your own trail of tears with injuries. You know, Tom and James have been through their own trail of tears with injuries. So they're just speaking from the heart. You know, that Tom had stress fractures in his heels and, you know, was hurting every day to run. And, 
you know, started learning chi running, good technique, and then figure, then we got, got him a pair of Newton shoes and got his foot flat. So kind of that combination of learning good form and getting in a functional shoe, he gets it. He gets it. Yeah. He, and how, how you communicate that is, I mean, he gets it now. You know, Tom runs a lot in a barefoot shoe. A year ago, could you have done that? But you can explain to a customer that evolution of how you got from where you were which is where most people are walking to the store. They're like over here, they're hurt in dysfunctional shoes. And maybe in a year, you'd be over here. Here's the transition. So I think it's just, you know, letting your guard down and just telling your own story. Everyone has their own. Jim Hickson's back there. You know, he's been doing this for years at his stores. His website's loaded with natural running and probably has more minimal shoes than anyone in the country. He sells more minimal shoes than anyone in the country. So, so Jim, find him and ask him how he engages the customer in that conversation. 